Hello guys, it is me once again, the Omega Squad HD, aka Joshua Ross, for my subscribers, and I'm going to do an episode review for The Walking Dead, Prey, aka Killer Within Part 2. Now when I first read that the original title for it was Killer Within Part 2, I thought, alright, great, you know, it's going to be like another, you know, prison episode, or it's going to be, you know, about wood boring. <laughs> And it's going to have, like, you know, somebody killing people within Woodbourne. You know, probably Mandria or Milton. And when the episode actually aired last night, I was left, you know, I was really shocked. This episode was pretty good. You know, it was almost all Woodbourne. Um, I can see why they didn't call it Killer Within Part 2. Because, really, nobody within Woodbourne died. But anyway, I'm going to try to review it to the best of my ability. And to clear a few things up, I call, you know, you know, I call Mandrea, Mandrea, because it's a joke, you know, she's, she acts like a man. She tries to, you know, be all tough and strong and ends up, you know, screwing everything up anyway, because she's stupid and a woman and the writers hate women. So, and like, you know, I call Woodboring, Woodboring, well, Woodbury, Woodboring, because almost everything that happens there, every single scene that happens there is boring. I mean, even the scenes from Made to Suffer were boring. So that's why I call it Woodborne. So if I call anything else like by a different name than, it, than it's supposed to be called, then it's because I'm joking around or I'm actually poking fun at how much the writing sucks. So anyway, yeah, I didn't see the flashback. Apparently there's a flashback between Mandrea and Mitch of when they were together for that seven to eight months or whatever. Didn't see that because, you know, I came in a little bit late. You know, what I did see was, you know, the entire episode, I would say that I'm glad what they did with Milton. I kind of hate how he, you know, took the gun away from Mandrea when she was about ready to shoot the governor. I mean, I don't think she really would have anyway, because you see, like, her face, she went like, she had, like, a, a, a man face. She went from, to, like that, like, she was choking on a big old dick or she smelled something really sweaty, ugh. Anyway, I shouldn't say that word. That word is gross. Anyway, yeah, like, that's what she looked like in the middle. And he's just like, da, 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 Andrea, da, da. Put the gun down, Andrea, da. He's like, slowly put it down. And the governor, he was just like, sitting in that chair like he was jerking off or had an epic orgasm. <laughs> I'm sorry. He looked like, he just like, was tongue all out, eyes bugged out of his head, boner just hanging out there. So anyway, that was just kind of awkward, you know. So, yeah, but the fact that, the fact that they had Tyrese, okay, Tyrese in the episode couldn't hit a walker with a freaking rifle. I mean, come on, how did you survive in this world for so long? I know, yeah, he has a big ass hammer, like, well, not really big, but a long ass hammer, I understand that, but, you know, I mean... He should be good with a gun. He should have had himself, you know, acquainted with some type of weaponry besides the big-ass hammer. But, anyway, I'm just going to call him Mr. T. Because, you know, he's big and rough and tough and he scruff. <laughs> All rhymed. Anyway, yeah, so Mr. T is Tyrese's new nickname. So, anyway, Mr. T and his sister Sasha, or Sasha, yeah, Sasha, there we go. Like, you know, they were on the watch. I really liked that scene because they had great dialogue. I just hated how Mr. T had, like, his freaking gun. He was aiming with his left his left arm. I don't know how people can do that. Maybe that's why he couldn't shoot. I was thinking the whole time he was shooting with his left freaking arm. I was like, like, dude, freaking switch to your right arm. You're pro you'd probably do a lot better if you did that. I mean, you know, like, freaking, like, the people on Call of Duty, they always aim, make it to where the guy is right-handed. So, I mean, I was thinking, you know, maybe if he switched, he would have done better. And freaking Sasha, I don't think we saw her shoot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we see we saw her shoot at all. And, you know, that's a waste. Like, we see her with a gun, doesn't shoot it. Okay? Waste of a time. And then here comes Mandrea with a big-ass crotch sticking out between her legs, saying, You need to go. Well, actually, it's more like, You need to go. And then, you know, Mr. T, he was like, Why? And then Sasha was like, Why? And she was like, because Woodboring's not what you think it is. Woodboring is like creepy and scary and it's a it, it, you just need to go. I was like, okay. And it took you this long to figure it out. The governor, the governor 
had freaking heads in a fish tank and freaking a walker daughter and he freaking all he wanted was sex and you know he wanted total control so it should have been quite obvious that this place was not safe from the beginning I mean like it was pretty obvious uh, they're like well as a viewer you will already know that he's the bad guy Okay, well, the events unfolded in front of her freaking eyes. In front of Mandrea's own eyes. Like, I mean, she saw all the signs, and, you know, she saw all the quirkiness and, you know, awkwardness, and, you know, the fish tanks and the walker daughter and whatever else the governor... And the... the, the, the as the governor would say, the butter's in the freaking cage. Like, I mean, come on, really... How? Michonne, or as I call her, Mitch, Mitch saw all the signs without even taking a step into Woodborn. Okay, well, the guy, here's, he, I mean, Mitch saw everything from the beginning. I mean, she freaking saw, I think she put two and two together and saw that the governor and his men freaking shot down the helicopter um, and walked with me. And she saw that. Or she at least put two and two together, and then she noticed that, hey, they're tying us up and blindfolding us and keeping us in a, you know, back of a car, and they knocked us out and whatnot and all of that, and they're taking us somewhere that, you know, we've never been to, and they're not telling us anything. Now, I understand it's a zombie apoc. I understand that. But, really, she saw it. I mean, she, she didn't, Mitch didn't take shit from anyone. She was just like, you, you piss Miss off, Mitch off or you give her a reason not to trust you. She goes, Whoa! with that freaking samurai sword. She chops your head off. She splits your head in two. She splits your wig. You fall down. You break your arm. You go to the hospital. Wait, there are no hospitals in the zombie park. Anyway, well, there are, but whatever. But yeah, you give her one reason. She was on it. She, she had her eyes open. I mean, yeah, I know. At first, I didn't like her character. Now, I'm actually starting to like her character. Because I'm starting to feel for her. I'm starting to put two and two together and say, hey, she's really smart. <laughs> Don't blame the bad writers for the, the freaking, you know, lack of dialogue. Um, anyway, so yeah. And I'm going to tip ahead a little bit more to freaking, you know, Mr. T and Alan fighting. Yeah, I think it's Alan. Yeah, definitely Alan. Because Ben is that dude's son. Alan is the guy that Mr. T freaking almost threw the biters. They're called fucking walkers. Come on. Anyway, so yeah. Um, that fight was pretty cool. You know, we got to see Tyrese almost become a killer. You know, that, I mean, that would have been interesting to see how it played out. I love the tension between him and Tyrese over his wife. And apparently his wife kind of had, like, a little bit of feelings for Mr. T after, um, after he saved her. But he's just like, hey, you know, I didn't want anything with your wife. I didn't want to defile her body. I didn't want to penetrate her. I didn't want to plant a seed in her and then make babies. He goes, I just saved her. You weren't able to at the time. He goes, well, I could have. Well, if he would have saved him, it would have been saved her. It would have been too late. So anyway, you know, redneck, get the fuck over it, okay? The dude saved your wife. Would you rather her have been bitten by biters or freaking saved by a tough, strong black man like Mr. T? Um, so anyway, yeah, skip ahead a little bit more to Mandrea running, and, you know, the governor chasing after her in the truck, that was pretty cool, um, them going to, um, I think it was the meeting place where Rick was at, I don't know, it might have been just like a random abandoned warehouse, I have no idea. That was really creepy, I mean, pound, like, heart-pounding creepy. Um, you know, David Moore say, I cannot believe that he did so good, I cannot believe Mandrea actually did so good, I mean, she was breathing really hard, I can understand she just got done running, but, I mean... I mean, I've run freaking, you know, I've run freaking 26 miles, and I only breathe that hard for, like, freaking two to three minutes. But Mandria, she was freaking, like, like, I mean, in a row, too. But Mandria, she was freaking running, like, she was not running, but she was breathing. She's like, <gasps> <gasps> like a man. I'm like, whoa, where the hell's the beard at? Where's her mustache at? Or as I would say, mustache. Where's her mustache at? Because she's a man. I mean, she was like, <gasps> Like, that's how she was breathing. I'm like, yeah, you just bring the governor over to you. Great idea, Mandria. Would he be an idiot again? But also, I do think she was kind of badass at the same time. So I'm going to contradict myself and be a hypocrite. She was a Mandria, a retard, and a badass at the same time. She pulled it off, actually. So I could actually stand her character this episode. Um, Dave and Moore say, yeah, really creepy. He pulled it off. I mean, the shovel and the... 
I can't do what he was doing because I, I, I'm not good at whistling. But yeah, that was just so creepy. It's like, Mandria, come home. Wood boring's your home now for the biters uh, and whatnot. Um, the way Mandria actually released the walkers on him was pretty interesting. I mean, I thought he would have been overrun. It's possible he could have freaking gotten away from it, but I mean, one, he was kind of almost like, by the end of it, the last time we saw him, he's kind of in a corner, really. I mean, yeah, there was a way to escape, but the way he was moving back, like, every freaking, like, there would be one right in front of him. He wasn't, like, moving back as fast as he could. He was, like, taking his time. Um, I, I, I know he wouldn't have been bitten. I, I knew he wouldn't have been bitten. Um, because, you know, that would defeat the whole purpose of the final two or three episodes. I don't remember how much, how many we have left. But yeah, so that scene was really interesting. The scene when, you know, Mandry finally made it to the person, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, woo, this whole episode's over, yes, everything's good. Um, that was pretty awesome. Uh, Rick, he thought he was hallucinating, I mean, he couldn't tell, he, he, it could have been a walker that tripped and, you know, or went after a little cute little bunny rabbit trying to eat it, so I, I can't really blame him that much for, um, not shooting that little thing that I saw, because it could have been a good person, it could have been, who knows, he didn't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, and then Milton burning the walkers, uh, the biters in the pit. That was pretty interesting. He was like, duh, duh, duh. so anyway, yeah, um, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go totally against the governor. I mean, uh, duh, duh, uh, Mandrake could have been, Mandrake could have shot him earlier, but now I'm just gonna make it all up by burning the walkers, and then I'm gonna totally tell the governor that I did it, because I'm gonna be like, shame about the biters, shame about them in the pit. Yeah, very shame about, yeah, 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 totally yeah, 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 I need to come up with a name for him. We got Hershey for, for freaking, you know, Herschel, Mandrea for Andrea, and Milton, I think I'm going to call him Milk Chocolate Milton. There we go, Milk Chocolate, that's the name. Um, JK, not going to do that, that sounds retarded. Milty, yeah, Milty. So anyway, Milty basically told the governor, yeah, I did it, and you suck, so suck my dick. And the governor was like, well, you're going to be sucking my dick later, because guess what, I got Mandrea, I definitely got her, but you don't know that I got her, because I got her. Yeah, she's she's chained up in my sex chamber down below. You know, we're going to do stuff. And, ugh, those tools he pulled out. The governor? Oh, my gosh, that was creepy. And freaking Mandra, I bet you she she's she's happy that she didn't have his baby. She's happy that the governor ain't here. Baby daddy. She's happy for that. That was just really creepy. So really played out. This episode, I was really shocked by it. Um, lots of, you know, it had a, the right amount of action and... Fear, intention, and it had you on the edge of your seat. There, the beginning, you know, it has to be slow. It can't just start out like action. Well, it can, but it would defeat the whole purpose of it. So this episode was pretty good. Lots of development. Um, it was kind of filler. I mean, I will admit it was kind of filler. But you know, now that Mandrea is captured, then it wasn't. And now that Milton is, you know, revolting, then it wasn't really filler at all, because it's actually advancing a separate plot and advancing the prison plot. So anyway, thank you for watching this review. I appreciate it. And if you if you want to, you can subscribe. And if you want to, you can like this video. You don't have to. But anyway, I thank you for your time. And goodbye.